गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल द डिलीजेंट स्टडी दिस इज एन एकेडमिक यूट्यूब चैनल इन वेस आई अपलोड डिफरेंट ट्यूटोरियल वीडियोस बेस्ड ऑन द कोर्सेज ऑफ स्कूल्स एंड कॉलेजेस एंड टुडे वंस अगेन आई हैव कम विद द न्यू वीडियो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू लेक्चर फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास नाइन इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ साइंस एंड इन साइंस आई विल टीच यू वन चैप्टर ऑफ योर बायोलॉजी दैट इज द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स so before to start my today's lecture i want to request all of you please kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that whenever i upload any new video then you will get the notification and also i want to request you to like comment and share the video and if you need the lecture of the particular topics of the particular chapters mm -hmm. of the particular subject then you can mention that in the comment box as well so that i will know your requirement in the chapter classification of living beings of class 9 students science you have to study uh, different terms like you have to study uh, about the genus species then generic name specific name scientific name binomial system of nomenclature taxonomy classification these terms should be understood properly in this chapter so i am going to explain all those terms clearly with the example uh, first of all i am going to explain what is the meaning of species then i will explain you what is the meaning of genus then i will explain you what is the meaning of a generic name what is the meaning of a specific name and what is the meaning of scientific name then i will explain you what is the meaning of nomenclature then i'll explain you what is the meaning of taxonomy what is the meaning of classification etc so let's start with the species first of all i want to define the species species are defined as the group of living beings which have almost all similarities and are able to interbreed together to produce their offspring are known as the species so the group of living beings which have almost all similarities and are able to interbreed together to produce their offspring are known as the species so from this definition you have to understand those group of animals or those group of plants which are almost all similar that means 99.99% they are similar just minor difference minor difference we can say in fact a negligible difference 99.99% totally similar they are totally similar and they are male and female can interbreed and uh, by interbreeding together they can reproduce their offspring then they are called a species let's see some example then you will be clear for example all the tigers are one species if you see all the tigers then all the tigers are totally same that means almost all all the tigers are same that means they have same structure they have same body system they have same morphology they have same physiology and they have same body activities and you cannot find any major difference between two tigers so all the tigers are the example of one species and all the tigers are kept in same species and the name of species of tiger is tigris so all the tigers are example of one species so all the tigers are one species that is tigris so it is the one example of species then another example of species we can take all the leopards are another one species and the name of species of leopard is pardus so so if you observe all the leopards then you can see that all the leopards are almost all same that means if you compare any two leopards then we can find total similarities between two leopards and just we can find minor difference between two leopards just uh, their minor difference is in external appearance otherwise they have same body system they have same structure they have same physiological activities in the body 
uh, they have same morphology everything they have same body system everything are same in all the group of leopards just minor difference in the external looks that is the reason all the leopards are in one species and the name of the species of leopard is pardus similarly all the lions are one species that is leo leo is the name of species of lions if you observe uh, all the lines then there we can find that all the lines are almost all similar just minor difference can be found uh, between two lines uh, that is uh, just minor external looks is different external appearance is uh, difference otherwise 99.99% uh, the, all the lines are totally similar to each other and male and female line can interbreed together as well to reproduce the offspring so all the lines are in same species that is leo then another example of species is all the jaguars are one species that is onca so onca is the name of species of all the jaguars all the jaguars have almost all similarities just a minor difference in fact negligible difference can be found between two jaguars and male and female jaguars are able to interbreed together to reproduce offspring so all the jaguars are the example of one species that is onca and if you observe all the snow leopards then all the snow leopards also have almost all similarities just a negligible difference can be found between two snow leopards and male and female snow leopards can interbreed together to reproduce their offspring so all the snow leopards are another one example of species and the name of species of all the snow leopards is yuncia if you see any two snow leopards then you can feel that they have almost all similarities their 99.99 percent characteristics are totally same they have same structure they have same body system and they have same body process and their external appearance internal structure totally same but minor difference is just in the external looks they may be a difference otherwise all the snow leopards have total similar characteristics so all the snow leopards are in same species that is yuncia so i have given you some examples of species all tigers are one species that is tigris all leopards are one species that is pardus all lions are one species that is leo all jaguars are one species that is onca all snow leopards are one species that is yuncia and in all these examples you can see they have almost all similarities just minor difference in fact we can see negligible difference and their male and female can interbreed together to reproduce their offspring so these are the examples of species let's see some more example of species so that you will be more clear all dogs are one species and the name of all uh, species of dogs is lupus if you observe two or more dogs then you can find that they have almost all similarities they are almost 100 percent characteristics are totally same they have same structure they have same appearance they have same bones they have same muscles they have same body system everything are nearly totally same just minor differences you can see in the screen as well just their external appearance is difference otherwise they have almost all similarities uh, that is the reason all the dogs are in same species and the name of species of dogs is lupus and another examples of species is all the jackals are one species and the name of species of jackals is aureus if you observe two or more jackals then you can feel that they have almost all similarities 
their almost all characteristics are totally same just uh, they have minor differences just in external looks external appearance they have some minor difference that is the reason we can differentiate them otherwise they are totally same and the male and female jackal can reproduce uh, their offspring they can interbreed and they produce their offspring uh, offspring means um, they can produce uh, the minor jackals that is the reason all the jackals are in same species and the name of species of jackals is aureus and another example of species is all the coyotes are one species coyotes means they are a type of wild dogs they looks like um, uh, domestic dogs or somewhat they looks like jackals as well uh, but uh, they are different types of species so their name is coyotes and all the coyotes are in same species they are the example of one species that is laterans if you observe two or more laterans also you can find that they have almost all similar characteristics they have same body system they have same morphology they have same body process um, inside them and they have same kind of bones they have same kind of skin they have same kind of appearance as well just a negligible difference can be found and male and female coyote can interbreed together to produce offspring so all the coyotes are one example of species and the name of uh, all species of coyotes is laterans so from here you have come to know all dogs are one species that is lupus all jackals are another one species that is aureus all coyotes are another one species that is laterans and these are the examples of one species because we can find in them they have almost all similarities and just they have minor difference and they are able to interbreed together to produce their offspring so from here you have to understand a group of living beings which have almost all similarities and they are able to interbreed together are known as the species now i am going to explain you about the genus and first of all genus is defined as the group of closely related species are called genus uh, the group of closely related species are called genus it means genus are the group of those different species which are closely related then we can say them genus and in the example of species i have given you the examples of different species like tigers leopards lions snow leopards jaguars and they are definitely different species but uh, in them also we can find many similarities like we can find many similarities uh, in uh, tigers leopards lions snow leopards and jaguars some similarities are like uh, all of those animals are carnivorous animals carnivorous means they feed on the flesh of other animals they feed on herbivores and all those animals have ability to roar roar means they can shout with loud noise in the forest and they can um, they can produce a kind of roaring sound uh, so we can find many similarities in tiger leopard lion and snow leopard and jaguars it is not that they are almost all similar but uh, we can find some similarities in them although they are different species so these are the example of one genus and so all these tigers leopards lions snow leopards and jaguars are kept in same genus that is panthera that is panthera similarly i have given you the examples of species like uh, dogs jackals and coyotes are the example of three species they are three different species but in those three animals also we can find many similarities uh, i mean to say dogs jackals and coyotes if you see them then their structure is similar and they we can find other similarities in them as well like um, their canine teeth is similar canine teeth means the teeth of the front part so we can keep them 
uh, in the same genus because they are different species but they are closely related species so dogs jackals and coyotes are in same genus that is canis so from here i mean to say tigers leopards lions snow leopards and jaguars are different species but they are closely related species we can find many similarities between them so they are in same genus uh, that is panthera and dogs jackals and coyotes are examples of three different species but if we observe them also we can find many similarities among them and that is the reason dogs jackals and coyotes are closely related species so we can keep them in same genus and we keep them in same genus that is the canis so from here you have to understand the group of closely related species are called genus and the name of related genus of a living beings is called its generic name for example generic name of tiger is panthera generic name of dogs is canis so this is the generic name similarly the name of related species of a living beings is known as the specific name for example specific name of tiger is tigris specific name of dogs is lupus like this so name of genus is generic name name of species is specific name of a living beings then when we combine the generic name and specific name of a living beings then it is called scientific name so the combination of the generic name and specific name of a living beings is called scientific name so to write the scientific name we have to write first of all the generic name then a specific name then uh, its combination will be the scientific name for example scientific name of lion is the combination of its generic name and a specific name generic name of lion is panthera and specific name of lion is leo so scientific name of lion is panthera leo and similarly scientific name of dog is canis lupus it means the generic name of dog is canis i have already said you and a specific name of dog is lupus then scientific name of dog is canis lupus that is generic name plus specific name and scientific name of frog is rana tigrina it means generic name of frog is rana and a specific name of the frog is tigrina and combination of generic name and a specific name of frog will be the scientific name of the frog and scientific name of the frog is that's why rana tigrina so you have to understand to write the scientific name first of all we have to write the generic name then we have to write the specific name then it will be the scientific name but here are some rules to write the scientific name that you have to understand the first letter of a generic name must be capital and first letter of a specific name must be small i want to repeat again first letter of generic name must be capital and first letter of specific name must be small this is the rule of writing the scientific name of the living beings and the process of assigning the corresponding scientific name to the living beings based on their characteristics is known as the binomial system of nomenclature so binomial system of nomenclature means the process of giving scientific name to the living beings and scientific name is given to every known living beings for example scientific name of human beings is homo sapiens scientific name of mustard is brassica capestris and i have already said you scientific name of leopard will be what will be the scientific name of leopard a uh, generic name of leopard is panthera and a specific name of leopard is pardus so scientific name of leopard is panthera pardus like that so from here i think you have become clear about the generic name a specific name scientific name and binomial system of nomenclature 
so students in my today's lecture i have explained you about the species genus generic name specific name scientific name and binomial system of nomenclature i want to end my today's videos and i'll come with the remaining of this classification of living beings chapter of the class 9 science book in my upcoming videos and if you want to see those videos and once again i want to request to you please kindly subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that whenever i bring other part of the chapter then you will get the notification and you can watch those videos and i also want to request to you again please like my videos and uh, share the videos in your social media so today i want to end my this lecture class and i want to thank all the students and viewers for giving me time bye bye and stay blessed